this last few nights with the word. Hallelujah. Don't want no trash in my house. Amen. I think that was maybe the first when he's preached. See me off it was, wasn't it? Am I right, Brother Mark? Something about garbage in my house. Yeah. The rubbish. The rubbish in my house. In your bad trust. In your bad trust. Praise God. Does anybody love him tonight? Amen. Yes, amen. Thank you. 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 Amen. Amen. I think the scripture says from the rising of the sun. Going down the same. To the going down of the same. The, Lord's the name, name of the Lord is to be praised. Amen. Praise God. Just think about creation. There's something going on all hours of the day and night. And the crickets let up, the birds take over. That's right. Yes. There is something doing something all the time. Amen. Praise God. I'm thankful. For the presence of God. We have really, really been in the presence of God these few months. Yes, thank you, Jesus. And God has been great among us. And He's blessed. He's done a lot of things. But Jeremy's not here to tell you. So I will. He came up here last night while we were doing altar service. He said, I want you to pray for me. His blood pressure was up. Having those headaches from it. So I prayed for him. He told me after service, he said, as soon as you pray for me, that blood pressure will be down. Praise God. That's right. Thank God for yes. what he does. He's still a healer, church. Yes, he is. Come on. He said you have not because you asked ask for him. Him. When you do ask for something, it's yes. the wrong thing. Yes. yes. And then he said you ask a miss. It's the same difference as asking for the wrong thing. Yeah. Amen. Praise God. Well, let's turn to our scripture setting tonight. Sister Rachel is going to be Romans chapter 8, <laughs> verses 35 through 39. Praise God. Y'all have probably already read this. I heard it read. But this is my scriptures for tonight. She didn't know that, but God did. Amen. Romans 8, I'm going to start at 35, finish out that chapter to 39. The scripture says, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? As it is written, for thy sake, we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things, we are more than a conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Thank you for standing. You can be seated. Thank you, Jesus. We'll just simply call this, Nothing Can Separate Us. Amen. Scripturally based title. But I begin to pray about this and study on it, and I find out that our assurance in the eternal presence of God, that God is always with us, is based upon the unfailing love of God. If you've ever experienced God's love, there's nothing like it. Amen. Amen. Yes. There's nothing like God's love. When you think about this, one of our most popular verses of Scripture that practically everybody knows, whether they've been to church or not, 
is for God so loved yes. the world that he gave. He's only begotten. Amen. Why? That whosoever believeth in him should not perish. That's the purpose of God right there. He wants no one to perish. Right. Amen. But that we can have eternal life through believing in him. But I like 17 just as much as 16 because it said, For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Amen. He sent, amen, this sacrifice, this propitiation to the world for the purpose of redeeming back to himself what Adam lost in the garden. There was no other way we could get back to God unless he brought, he done it himself. That's right. They had the blood of bulls and goats and the sacrifices of the Old Testament, but those things only lasted for about a year. And then they had to have another day of atonement. They had to shed another sacrifice and take the blood, amen, before the Lord in the Holy of Holies. But he began to do something in this that took away the sacrifice of the animals that was only a temporary fix. And he began to appease the anger or the wrath of God against sin with the blood of Jesus Christ. Yes. Amen. And our confidence in all of these things that he has done is the fact that his love, amen, keeps us in the palm of his hand. Amen. Aren't you glad for that? Yes. Amen. It has been demonstrated to us through that atoning sacrifice of Jesus Christ. Amen. You know, the biggest thing about this verse is a lot of times I, I have heard this testified and, amen, talk about their, their, their love for God. Amen. This is not based upon your love for God. This is based on his love for us. Amen. Come on, there was nothing the scripture says that was desirable about him, nor either about us. But the Bible said while we were yet sinners, while we were yet dead in our trespasses, yes. while we were yet unholy, unthankful, amen, the Bible said Christ died for us. Amen. And in that, he commended his love toward us. Yeah. Amen. I, I'm just thankful to know, amen, it wasn't based on how good I was. It wasn't based on how much money I had. It wasn't based on how much talent I had. It wasn't based on which family I was born into. Yeah. It was based upon, amen, whosoever will, let him come and drink of the water of life freely. Yes. Amen. He began to make for us, uh, amen, what had been lost in the beginning. Uh, amen. But what he'd done was this. Uh, amen. He began to show a love uh, that the devil hated. Because in essence, God put us where Lucifer used to be. That's right. Amen. Amen. The truth is that there is a target upon us, Christians, saints of God, simply because we are amen, uh, uh, filling the void that Satan made when he took a third of the angels with him. And I was preaching one night, and, and then the Lord began to put it on me like this. Help wanted. Yeah. Help wanted. There's a sign in heaven. Help wanted. And I, I, I began to, as I was preaching, I was preaching when he was giving me this. He started saying, there to that woman, he said, the woman said, the Jews say you've got to be over here in Jerusalem or in this mountain to praise God. And Jesus looked at her and said, the time is coming, and now is, when the true worshiper must worship him 
in spirit and in truth. And then he made a statement that said, for the Father seeketh such yes. to worship him. Yes. Amen. There was a void there in heaven where the praise section was. Lucifer was over this area and he took all amen, of those angels that was there filling that place where praise used to be and now, amen, there is a void and there is a help wanted sign hung in the sky and I don't know about you but I've been trying to do my best to let God know I want one of those jobs. Yes. Come on. Amen. He said he's looking for someone to praise him. Oh, I can praise you, Lord. I'm not ashamed to lift my hands and praise you. I'm not afraid and then ashamed to witness and talk about the goodness. I'm not ashamed to leap for joy. I'm not ashamed to sing. I'm not ashamed to clap my hands. As a matter of fact, amen, I may do it a little harder and a little harder get his attention and let him know I really want one of those jobs. Yes. Praise yes. God. Yeah. And I began to look at this and I said how can a person be separated from God? And I touched it last night. I had to slow down because I was about to get into the night. The truth is there is nobody can separate you from God. From God's love. Now this is God's love. This is not our love. But they cannot play with this game and pull you out of the hand of God, put you back in, pull you out, put you in. That's not possible. But the Bible says that we are planted in His hand. The Bible says that His eyes are over the righteous. And his ears are open unto their cries. The Bible said, amen, that he can heal. He's a deliverer. He's a savior. He's a way maker. Amen. He's a provider. Amen. He is all things to his people. Amen. But the truth is, amen, the devil wants to feel, amen, like you're isolated, like you're on Patmos by yourself. But can I tell you, even on the Isle of Patmos, Said, and he was in the spirit on the Lord's day. He was by himself, but God didn't leave him. He was all there, and then it hadn't had no friends, didn't have no pals, but he had Jesus, and he was in the spirit. And God began to show him signs and wonders, and then gave him a testimony that we have to preach about tonight. Somebody ought to give him a little bit of praise. Isolated, That's right. Amen. Thank you, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. There's many times the devil wants you to feel that way. Because when you take to heart the feeling of being isolated, you begin to pull back. And what happens is that excitement and anxiety of we're going to church begins to leak out. Yeah. And you don't feel as anxious to get in the presence of God anymore. You're not excited about coming and praising God and the glory of God filling the house. And what happens is you begin to withdraw yourself until you don't even show up for church. That's right. Because you've allowed that feeling of isolation separate you. Nothing can separate you. You can be amen, isolated, but you can't be separated. Well, praise Bless God. You. Amen. Glory to the Lamb of God. Because, and then you read up above that and you said, amen, it's Christ. Yes. And then it said a little further up above that, it said, if God be for us, who against us. Does it really matter who's against us if he's for us? That's 
That's right. Amen.
he kept pushing anyway. He kept pushing. And finally, he got to the point where he was like, God, I don't understand why you told me to push on this rock. He said, it hasn't moved one, one, one millimeter. It's still where it was when I first put my hands on it. He said, God began to speak and say, Son, I never told you to move the rock. I just said push against the rock. He said, when you started pushing, it was a little weak, frail looking thing. But since you've been pushing, look at the development. Yeah. Oh, hallelujah. Yeah. Oh, hallelujah. God ain't asked you to do something you can't do. All he wants you to do is have faith in God. Yeah. Amen. If you want a mountain moved, he said, just have faith. That's a grain of mustard seed. If you want a healing, all you got to do is believe in God. Your faith is going to make the difference in the outcome of what you're up against. Yes. Praise God. When I look at these things, I saw, hey man, this fact that he said, none of these things move me. I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand. If any of these things move you, they come against you. But he makes this statement that Sister Rachel said. Yay! In all these things, I am more than a conqueror. <laughs> I, I got a little bit of revelation on what being more than a conqueror is. Brother Dallas, I, I, I know probably in your days, you probably watched a little bit of boxing, didn't you? Um, in your younger days. These guys, they get in a squared circle. And they begin to punch each other. They begin to beat on each other. Red blotches all over them. And after a little while, swelling begins to pop up uh -huh. under their eyes. A little bit of blood starts seeping out of these wounds that the match has inflicted on them. But one of these will be declared the winner or the conqueror. Whether the other opponent is able to stand or not, one of them's gonna get his hand lifted and be declared the winner. Now they'll cut him a check. He'll put that in his pocket till he gets home. And then he'll take that check and give it to his wife. <laughs> she didn't fight. She didn't have the whelps on her face. She didn't feel the pain and the suffering that was inflicted round by round. But she is more than the conqueror because she, oh hallelujah, got the prize that was awarded at the end of the fight. Can I tell you, Jesus is the one that fought the fight. Jesus is the one that had his beard plucked from his face. Jesus is the one that felt the pain of the cat of nine tails. Jesus was the one that had the thorns pressed into his head. Jesus was the one that was stripped naked and hung up and then in the open. And then Jesus was the one that had the nails driven in his head. Get on the inside. 
they will never separate you from God. Yes, thank you, Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. You know what I thought about? Sometimes, I mentioned last night, sometimes things will separate us. Or maybe just kind of other things pick our interest. There was one scripture talks about. Thought he was ready to go out on his own. Thought he was ready to do his own thing. So he went to his father. Said, give me my inheritance. This is in Luke chapter number 15. The father didn't spend a lot of time trying to talk him out of it. But divided his portion of the inheritance. He gave it to him. That boy left, heading out into the sunset. His choices and decisions wasn't very good. The Bible said he spent all that he had on riotous living, not righteous, riotous. Things that were against the nature of God. And he began to find himself with friends everywhere. As long as he was supporting the party. As yeah. long as he was the one that was in doing the inviting and had the money to keep him coming. But he woke up one day. And instead of finding himself in a nice, nice warm bed. <coughs> he found himself out there working in abomination. Because these pigs were abomination to the Jewish people. And so the Bible said that he would have ate the husk that was for the swine. But something happened. It said he came to himself. Yeah. Praise God. Yes. Thank Praise you, Jesus. God. Can I tell you the reason why we're here tonight? It's because we came to ourselves. Amen. Come on, we, we wasn't even ourselves for a while. Amen. We were under the authority and rulership of the devil. And we did whatever he wanted us to do. But he came to himself, the Bible said, and he began to say, How many hired servants back in my father's house? Plenty of bread to eat. And I'm about to perish for hunger. He said, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to rise and I'm going back to the Father's house. And I'm going to say, Father, I'm not worthy to be called your son. But just make me in one of your hired servants. Because in that position he was in, the servant was better off than he was. But the truth was, the father had been watching the road he left since that day. And he had been looking, knowing that one of these days, he was coming back. And when he began to look up, the Bible said that the son, he saw him, and he said that he ran, he rose and ran. His father came, saw him a great ways off and came, amen, and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight and am no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said to the servants, bring forth the best robe. Amen. And he said, and went on to say, amen. Amen. He said, and I done lost my place. He said, and put it on him. And put a ring on his hand. And shoes on his feet. And 
and bring hither the fatted calf and kill it and let us eat and be merry. Amen. The son had saw himself as a failure. The son saw himself as not being worthy to be called a son. And so what it comes down to is what he is or what he was. Amen. What he was. Amen. Actually, he still is. Oh, hallelujah. He was the father's he was the father's son when he came back. You hear what I'm saying? It did not change who he was because he left. He wasn't in good standing, but he was still the father's son. Right, amen. Praise God. And what he said, and then the father looks at him and he said, for this my son, still recognized him as being what he was. Amen. He was dead. Let's look at what he was and what he is, okay? He was dead. <laughs> but he is alive again. He was lost. Praise God. Oh, hallelujah. But now he's found. Come on, he didn't look at him as being a failure. He didn't look at him as being a waste of time and effort. He didn't think about his inheritance that he blew on a bunch of trash. Amen. He said he was dead, but he's alive now. He was lost, but now he's found. Amen. What it matters to God, amen, is what you hear. Amen. And what you hear is saved, sanctified, filled with heaven's Holy Ghost. says amen it says this and many were astounded at thee his visage was so marred more than any man his form more than the sons of men when they looked upon him they'd never seen anything like it he was beaten beyond recognition the blood, everything that was brought out of the inside of him. He said, who hath believed our report? To whom is the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of a dry ground. He hath no form nor company. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty, amen, that we should desire him. There's nothing to look at and say, that's what I want. Praise God. Surely he hath borne our grief and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. Can you see the picture of being more than a conqueror as I'm reading this? Yes. Amen. Praise God. Amen. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. Every one of us. He was oppressed and was afflicted. Yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before the shear is dumb. So he openeth not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And who shall declare his generation? For he is cut off out of the land of the living. 
for the transgression of my people was he stricken. Not one thing that he got did he deserve. Amen. Everything that he endured, it should have been us. Amen. We should have been the one tied to the post. We should have been the one that was beaten beyond recognition. Yes. We should have been the one that the cat of nine tails that had bone and glass and metals, amen, incorporated in the length of this, amen, whip, amen, that would yank flesh off of the body as it struck and was pulled back. That should have been our sister Rachel. But his love toward us. You know what he did? He gave him a substitute. Should have been us. But he gave him a substitute. He gave himself. And he let them vent all their frustrations and all their wrath and malice and anger against what should have been us. He took it upon himself. Does anybody know why he did that? Love. The scripture said that he endured the cross, despised the shame, but yet he endured it for the joy that was set before him. Come on, somebody. Thank you, Jesus. He endured all of this affliction, suffering, and persecution against himself, rejection, and everything else. Amen. For what reason? Amen. The joy and the joy, amen, that was out in front of him that kept him motivated and kept him going was the fact, amen, that in, amen, April of 2021, there would be a church in Camp Creek Road where somebody would have an opportunity to lift their hands and give him praise that otherwise wouldn't have been able to. There needed to be one. 
used to swear, say all manner of evil and unrighteous. Yes. Yes. But when they come to Jesus, it's like he erases all of those things from their mind and they don't even desire to do that anymore. Because he's already paid the price. He's already paid the penalty. So now it's just a matter of coming to him and asking him to forgive us of these things. There's not one thing that God can't forgive. I, I, I have said this before. There's two sins that God can't forgive. One of them we read, the blasphemy, the Holy Ghost. There's only one other sin that can't be forgiven. Sister Rachel, that other sin is one that has not been repented of. Amen. Yes, amen. Come on. The Bible said if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us. But if we don't, the Bible says, with the heart man believeth. But confession is made with the mouth. Yeah. Come on. Amen. Confession is made. Apparently believing in your heart is not enough. That's right. If the confession is just as important as the believing, don't just count on believing. But confess. Confess him as Lord. Confess him as Master. And confess your sins. And find justification and forgiveness for everything. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I don't regret one minute at any time that I have wasted it or felt like the devil wanted me to make me think I wasted my time serving the Lord. Amen. Come on, I, I, I'm not happy until I get to the presence of God. I don't feel like I'm worth anything until I get in the presence of God. I don't feel like I'm anybody until I get into the presence of God. And when I feel his presence, he begins to confirm and assure me that this one thing, Nevertheless, the foundation of God stand assured. Having this seal, yes. the Lord knoweth them that are his. Yes. And it's a confirmation that I do not belong to the devil any longer. Yes. Amen. By feeling the Holy Ghost and the presence of God moving all around me and stirring me on the inside. Amen. It's a confirmation. Amen. That I'm still his because the Holy Ghost is not going to dwell in an unclean temple. Amen. It's not going to hang around where it's supposed to share. Amen. A room with Lucifer. Amen. You either come out from among them and be separate or you forget it because God will not share His glory with anybody. Amen. That's the word. Amen. Preacher. Amen. Praise God. Our God is a holy God. And anything outside of holiness cannot be in this temple. Because God has never and he's not going to start now sharing his fire with strange fire. Try it. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lamb of God. Come on, this is what old timers used to say. Amen. It's either heaven or it's hell. Amen. It's either holiness or it's not. Come on, it's either black or it's white. Come on, there ain't no shaded areas, ain't no gray. You gotta figure out which side of the fence you wanna be on. Amen. I feel like Joshua. As for me and my house, we're gonna serve the Lord. Does anybody feel that? Amen. Yourself tonight has for me and my house. Amen. We are going to, oh, hallelujah. I wish somebody that felt that way would stand to your feet and begin to praise the Lamb of God and begin to glorify Him. Because if He had never called you, you wouldn't be where you're at tonight. It's the mercies of God that bringeth us down to repentance. Oh, God, I am what I am. 
Nothing can separate you. Nothing can separate you. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. I want you to know something. Amen. The day is being short. I believe the coming of the Lord. Amen. If we really knew and understood how close it was, we wouldn't waste no more time trying to please the flesh or anything that has to do with it. Amen. It's time. Amen. As the man of God went to Hezekiah and he said, to set your house in order because you're going to die and not live. we got to live. Amen. Every moment as it's our last one. Amen. I don't know if i got another breath or not, but if I do, I'm going to use it. The praise of the name of Jesus. I'm going to live for him. I'm going to serve him until I can't serve no more. I'm, oh, hallelujah. Sister Rachel, I'm Till I can't live no more. Amen. The dead can't praise him. Amen. But we can. We've been saved. We've been sanctified. We've been filled. We've got a praise. He took judgment. Amen. And wrath out of our life. And he replaced it with joy and peace in the Holy Ghost. Somebody ought to praise him. Our glory to Jesus. Thank you. Lord. Praise God. I wonder if anybody in here tonight that would like to turn things around. If heaven right now was placed before you and you were to stand before the judgment seat of Christ, how would things end up? Would he say you are in? Or would he say depart from me? We don't have a problem. 